need repair. So that's again, you gotta. People forget about basements. You heard me talk about cleaning the walls, right? Taking the cobwebs out, wipe, literally wiping down the pipes, wiping down the boiler, wiping down the furnace, right? Um, so now you're evaluating the basement. What what needs to be done there? You know, they got the, the graffiti all over it. It looks like crap, right? You want to? You know, I would figure spraying that basement out. Just uh, have your painter give you a quick down and dirty. It's cheap. Straight out. It's cheap and it looks like a million Basement bucks, just right? hose it down. That's it. Clean. So our framing need repair. Now sometimes that can be tough, right? Looking at how do you look at framing when all the walls are covered up, right? Like Bill said, he, his one of those first lips he bought when I told him, no, don't wait till Monday. Go get the owner now and get under contract. He's like, well, look at it. The, the place is gutted. I said, that's great. The place is gutted. It's clean. You can see the frame, and this is awesome. I, I wanted to buy the house. Sell it to me. He's like, no, no, I think I want to keep this one. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get him to wholesale it to me, right? Because I could see everything. I could see the studs. I could see if there's any rod. I could see the electrical. I said, dude, this is like a dream. I never walked into a house like this, right? But you, if you can't see it, what you have to start looking at is check, go in there and look at the walls. Look at the floor. If the floor's doing this, and you know, you're like walking through the house like this, and I and, and we've had it, you've been there, right? Can I so, touch, can, yes, go ahead. I just want to touch on that just on the yellow letter thing, real quick. I just I didn't get to it last night. That particular house that we're talking about, I sent them a yellow letter. They got it, I'm gonna say October, November, I don't remember the time frame. And I went to look at the house, and it wasn't gutted at that point. It had furniture in there, and, and dad had just moved out mom and dad. And I put an offer in. It was too low. He didn't accept my offer. He had it on the market for like 100000 I think I put 68 in the offer or something like that. I don't remember the numbers. Uh, and it was too low. I said, okay, well, thank you, blah, 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 and we moved on. In January, I sent him another letter. Now, he's already said no to me, but it's just my nature to be persistent. And my wife says annoying, I say persistent. <laughs> so I sent him another letter. Well, in March, he calls me. He says, are you still interested in the house? I got your letter back in January. We talked a little bit. He told me that he had, had a flood in the house in the wintertime. The pipes had broken, and the water had leaked in two or three days. And he waited to call me. He kept my letter, but he waited to call me until the dumpster was removed from the yard. It was removed today. Are you interested? I said, I'll look at it tomorrow. That was on a Thursday. That's when me and Mike went to look at it on Friday. And then on Monday, I signed a PNS with the guy. And the price at that point, he wanted 45 I said, would you take 40 He said, yes. So See that? Persistence. Because I sent him another letter, so it's, it's, it's important. Persistence, persistence breaks down persistence. Yes. And persistence plus patience equals profits, right? And there's a perfect example, right? All right, so where were we? On uh, basement needs repair. So evaluate the basement. Look at, you know, uh, seal the basement, a couple hundred bucks. Uh, replace it. Sometimes you might have to replace the seals going down the basement. Uh, pour concrete floor. Sometimes you have to put in new supports. If, if there's some foundation, I mean, if there's some sagging or something. So look, we got one now where we looked at and was at the Natick house. I was confused walking through this basement looking at the way this thing was. Oh, yeah. I'm just like, I don't even know where to begin on this one. So Jen, my architect, went down there and looked at it with that contractor. Because that was going to be one expense. I wasn't 100% sure. I said, this could be about 10 grand just to put a number on it. And we're probably going to, might not be 10, but. Well, it's, we got foundation issues there right. as well. So, so, it could be close to 10. so when you're not sure, you got to, you know, take it to the next step. You have a question, Billy? Uh, so framing, you, so when you're looking at the framing, just eyeball the walls. You can look at the walls and see if, if, if things are looking twisted or things are bowing out, right? If floors are, uh, are going up and down, that's a good indication that there's some framing issues, right? Because those are things you can't see. So you have to put something in there and, and account for character, you know? Character, yeah, some people call it character, yeah. So now, uh, you can't go to the extreme like this property in Natick. It's an old home. It's 150 years old, I think, or maybe older. 20, yeah, 18 something. So, to some degree, you're not going to perfectly level everything out. There's going to be some dips and some valleys, and that's the, per that's the nature of sometimes old homes. So, you try to fix it as best as you can to get things stabilized, more important. All right, so, interior trim, doors, closet shelving. Uh, always look for that stuff. We talked about closets the other day, right? This is a, like the least expensive thing to do that gets the biggest enjoyment from people. It's amazing. Their closets. Why does it excite a lot of women? Look, they're smiling. Right? <laughs> so take out those ugly closets. Even if you have to just texture the ceilings, texture the walls, and put a nice new wire shelving, right? And you guys are going to see, I don't know if they end up going back and texturing those closets in Dartmouth. If they did, they did, they did it. Wet. Right. We walked through our Dartmouth property for a semi inspection. Right? This is when I asked Bill if I could go walk a couple of our properties. And all the closets, even though they were repaired, 
you could see the plaster appears. It didn't look that good, and you know, I'm fussy. And I'm saying, why, why? What the, I'm not happy with this. So all they had to do was just text them rather than try to do the repairs. They could have just texted everything, and they would look brand new. It didn't make because, sense for them to do what they did. So, cla so we kind of, so now we'll define our scope a little more now to say, even though it's a closet, it doesn't mean you can get away with sloppy workmanship, right? And texture, people accept, you know, you guys know what texture, you like, you know the ceilings? From closets, you can do the walls as well. So we have them come back, texture the closets, and I'll be seeing the retexture for the first time. But right, and it's so done. Just a note on that, so they did it today, they had to use joint compound instead of plaster because they painted the walls already, and the joint compound will stick better with, better with the welding bond. So they're wet, so don't touch them. Yeah, and then don't don't note, touch the closet. Also note that they need to go back and paint them white yeah. now because they used the joint compound. So because they didn't do it right the first time, they now have a two-step process to do at their cost. So painting interior, you know, usually we just try to roughly guess this at a buck fifty, two bucks a square foot, and that's not for painting the square footage of the walls. That's just a rough idea on the square footage of the house. So if you have a fifteen hundred square foot house. You expect to pay, you know, twenty five hundred to three thousand dollars. That's for painting your ceilings, your trim, and your walls. All right. I don't know what you guys just. You, what was the square footage of the house you just did? Well, we started out with about a thousand. Okay. And what? How many? And how much did it cost you to paint the house? It cost me about thirty three hundred. About thirty three. Okay. Because they had a, people that were there before. They were smokers. Yep. So he tried doing the one floor paint. So sure. Happened. It just wasn't sticking. Yep, I understand. So, so, you know, you know three three hundred dollars, not not a bad price. You know, we can work on that. I, I can guarantee we can get that price down a little bit because that's a small house, you know. But still, it's not. You didn't pay five or six. And Joe, Joe's a painter. He knows that's that's a fair price. Three three hundred bucks. Two coats, primer, kilts. Yep. yep. Yeah. So, so I wouldn't say so. So that's good, you know. But the idea is everybody's gonna make money. But you know, if that same painter now thinks you know he's gonna do a third, or a fourth, a fifth, or sixth, or seventh job. Start saying, hey, you know, can we do a little bit better? I can refer you on the business. I think they might work, but you can do a little bit better on that.